A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, Shall shepherd my people Israel, and shall be commander of Israel. And all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron. King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. Verbum Domini. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, We will go to the house of the Lord. Now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city which compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the decrees for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible. Whether thrones and dominions or principalities or powers, all things are created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness were pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. Verbum Domini. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia. Dominos Rabiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Lucum. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him as they approached to offer him wine. They called out, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him, saying in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly for the sentence we have received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Verbum Domini. Hi, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is uh, the great feast of Christ, the King of the universe. Christ the King, right? Uh, Viva Cristo Re. Viva Cristo Re. And... Uh, I, I, the question, I think, for all of us today is, is Christ the king of our lives? I mean, very simple. Is he, is he the uh, king of our lives? How often do we think about Christ over the course of the day? Is that who we're focused on over the, uh, over the course of the day? Is he the king of our lives? Uh, 
Are we mindful of him all day long? Are we mindful of being uh, obedient to all that he commands, right? To teach them to obey all that I command. And uh, that is a reflection for us. And, and all of us can do better in that regard. There is no one who cannot do better in that regard. Now, a great meditation, I think, is well let, let's yeah a great meditation is in the second reading i think and it really is and let me go to let, let me go to the doxology all right uh through him and with him and in him through him and with him and in him O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So we give praise to our Father in heaven through Jesus, with Jesus, and within Jesus, because we are part of the mystical body of Christ. But Paul expands on that, right? And he says that, that all the universe is contained within Jesus. And if you see... These images of Christ the King, you can see that the entire universe is contained within Jesus. It is a, a beautiful image, the icon of Christ, uh, King of the universe. And think about that. I mean, think about that, right? That Christ is the head. We are the body, but we're contained in Christ. And all things are for Christ. Creation was created for for Christ, by Christ, and in Christ. I mean, this is really a, a, a mind-blowing, I think, reflection for all of us to just sit and meditate on this. We look at, we look outside, and we see the world, and we see the stars, right? And we have some conception of the universe, and yet that is all contained in Christ, in God. It's just uh, unbelievable, right? It's just uh, just an amazing, amazing reflection. And it is true. It is true. And in this uh, universe that's contained within Christ, right? Christ contains this entire universe. There is much rot. There is much corruption. There is much sin, right? Uh, and he contains all of this. For one purpose and one purpose only. To bring that rot and corruption and sin to good, to grace, to eternal salvation. And I think this is the significance of the first reading and the gospel. Where we have David, who took Bathsheba as his wife after killing her husband Uriah. Yet, alright, God chose David to be king of Israel. The chosen people, king of the chosen people. And then also, all right, uh, an ancestor, right? That that Jesus would become, would come from the family of David, the line of David, the ancestry of David, right? This sinful man. This sinful man. But but this this man recognized his sins always. Not maybe when he surely did not recognize his sin when he was plotting to kill Uriah and take Bathsheba. But as soon as he was confronted with it, so he must have, had, he must have been a man of great passion. And unfortunately, his passions overwhelmed his intellect and his desire to do the good often. But as soon as he uh, uh, came to his senses, right, he understood uh, how uh, God, uh, worked and he asked for forgiveness uh, and so actually we have the thief on the cross who came to his senses at the last moment at the last moment uh, and asked for repentance Peter who was a very very passionate man who denied Christ but came to his senses and asked for forgiveness right the prodigal son who came to his senses in spite of all of the passionate uh, 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 sinfulness uh, that he immersed himself in. 
And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are inside of Jesus, the King of the universe, right? We're encompassed by Jesus, the King of the universe. There's no excuse not to meditate on that and accept the grace that he gives us. The grace of his mercy, the grace to come to repentance, the grace to... And, and I think that this is how you can really um, come to an understanding that your sins can always be before you without you being burdened by those sins, crushed by those sins. I mean, because really, if uh, we were to look at the sinfulness, sinfulness in our lives and from a human standpoint, we would be crushed by those sins, burdened by those sins. Burdened by the fact that Christ, all just, would want us to do reparation and, and, and retribution for those sins. We'd be crushed by that, but without, but with his mercy. We're not crushed by those sins. We seek his mercy. And thus we understand the need for reparation, but without being crushed by the, 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 the reality of that reparation, that retribution, right? So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and people ask about the, the, the good thief. It doesn't seem as if he had to do any reparation. We don't know. Uh, when he said, today you'll be with me in paradise, uh, the question could be asked, uh, well, uh, is that because it was such a public proclamation of faith um, that, that that was his reparation right then and there? Uh, or did he have to do reparation? Because remember, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years like a day. Uh, so what was purgatory like for him? Uh, but the fact of the matter is, he was purified. Nothing impure shall enter into heaven. For him to experience paradise, he was purified. Uh, very possibly the only one truly purified by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, because as much as our Christian brothers and sisters say they're purified by the blood of the Lamb, they're not purified to the extent that they're just going to die and go to heaven. I, I saw that again uh, today uh, on, uh, uh, on social media, this, this, this uh, preacher just, you know, saying that, you know, look at, uh, we're all sinful, we're all doomed, Jesus dies, and we're all forgiven, and that's it, we're all going to heaven justified by the blood of the Lamb. Well, uh, no, and he says, only if you repent, if you repent. Well, yeah, but that repentance has to be ongoing, that repentance has to be daily conversion, a daily conversion. Uh, it's not like we repent, we're justified, and then we can just go live any old way we want uh, and not uh, 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 do anything. All right, not do anything and still achieve eternal salvation. No, that is just a goofy theology. It doesn't make any sense. There's no logic. All right, but the reparation, I think, that the good thief did was chastising his fellow thief. And so uh, there was a repentance and there was reparation right there on the cross at the last minute, which is a great hope for us. It's a great hope for us, but there's also a danger in that. We don't want to wait till the last minute to repent. We want to repent now. We want to repent often. We want to repent daily. We want to do constant reparation for our sins. We want to live as saints, die as saints. We can do that within this, this reality of Christ, the King of the universe, within this mystical body of Christ, right? We have abundant graces, the sacraments, the church, the saints as models for each and every single one of us. Uh, spiritual exercises, scripture, uh, the holy sacrifice of the mass, it's all there contained within Christ. And so my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us ask that question. Is Christ the king of our lives? And to, to really put that into focus, read St. Paul uh, to the Colossians, uh, chapter 1 is the beginning of Colossians where he talks about this, right? That, that the universe was made for Christ, by Christ, and with, is within Christ, right? And when we do the doxology today, be mindful of that because, of course, the doxology is leading us, right, into being one with Christ, being united to Christ through the Eucharist.